they meet on a grassy plain at a distance of 2,000 meters. Both tanks are crewed by competent veterans. Both tanks spot each other. The T-90 MS's tank commander targets the Challenger II. The gun automatically slaves the target while the gunner works out the range and round. The Challenger II's TC sights the T-90 MS and instructs the gunner of the direction and range. The gunner works out the rest. The T-90 MS is faster to draw a bead on the Challenger II. Both tanks have rounds in the breach. As both gunners blinked from the sweat on their brow, the T-90 fires first. The Russian-made T-90 fired the 125mm 3BM 42M APFSDS made of wolframite heavy alloy, WH-8 tungsten. The Challenger 2 fires the 120mm L27UX uranium expanded APFSDS. Both rounds pass each other. The T-90 MS round slams into the Challenger 2's turret. The heavy and dense tungsten rod at high velocity meets the incredibly hard Dorchester II and shatters. When an unstoppable force meets an unmovable object, they both surrender. In the magical high-velocity realm, the two-meeting object behaves like a fluid. A huge rock splashing into a pond. The Dorchester II laminate of the turret cracks and deforms, but the tungsten did not manage to punch a hole through. Challenger 2's round flies true to its target, the dense uranium rod contacts a relit plate on the T-90 turret. The plate detonates. While the detonation does not destroy the UX rod, it shifts its path, reducing and redirecting the jet from its intended point of impact. The warped UX round, slightly off-center, clanks against the steel turret of the T-90 taking off chunks of steel before finally embedding itself in the ceramic-layered armor of the turret. It created a shower of debris. Both gunners cursed. As the autoloader cycles on the T-90, the round loads in mere seconds. The Challenger 2's loader struggled with the two-piece 120mm projectile and charge. The Challenger 2's TC knowing this disadvantage dispensed smoke charges and ordered the driver to reposition the tank. This eliminated the T-90's targeting advantage. Once the Challenger 2's ammunition was loaded, the TC ordered the tank forward, driving through the smoke curtain. The T-90 sighted up the Challenger 2 again and fired first. The high-velocity WHA round landed squarely on the Challenger 2's glassy, its heavy tungsten rod punched into the Dorchester 2 plates. Unlike the first time, this round managed to crack the laminates and punch a little through the thinner glassy armor. Tungsten fragments spewed forth like shotgun rounds. It took chunks off the driver's shoulder. Fighting the panic that was beginning to grip the gunner, the TC yelled for the gunner to fire. Bang! The next UX round flew. By this time, the T-90 had already loaded a fresh round and was about to fire. Overcoming his trepidation, the Challenger 2's gunner made certain to aim for the hull. The UX reached out and touched the T-90, grazing a relict plate without setting it off. Although it is commonly believed that smoothbore guns with a higher velocity trumps the rifled gun in every way, the spinning penetrator though slower, is more aggressive than a non-spinning rod in cracking ceramics. As the UX rod punctures through the steel hull, the tip of the rod peels away in an adiabatic shearing process, revealing a sharper core. Even the ceramic plates in the way couldn't stop the UX as it bores deeper. Instead. The hydromechanical process used the armor to peel the outer layer of the UX rod again revealing an even sharper penetrator head. Finally, completing its journey, it exits through the T-90's armor layers, exposing itself to the inside of the tank, and within it the oxygen. The exposed pure uranium drank in the air and sparked, igniting the air inside the tank in a pyrophoric process. The air ignited 
and the sudden flashpoint torched the round sitting on the carousel. In that infinitesimal small span of time, the crew witnessed the sparks, and everything detonated. The turret of the T-90 flew off its hull, evacuating along with it, the charred remains of the tank commander.